Good morning, everybody. Today is April 14th. It is 9 a.m. and you are live with The Retail Doc. Do me a favor and type in where you're joining me from around the world, whether you're watching this on YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook, or you're watching it even later on. I always appreciate knowing where our viewers are from. And uh, if you still have comments, although I took them all day Saturday, you can enter them in comments here below and I will be able to answer them while live. How's that? So, uh, the, um, and also make sure that you subscribe. And if you like what I have to say, which I hope you do, you'll also share our broadcast with your friends, uh, because brick and mortar retailers could use a lot of inspiration. And I've been doing this for about 30 years. If you're new to me, I am a motivational speaker. I have an online retail sales training program. I do business makeovers. I have two podcasts, <clears throat> four books, pretty much. I am the guy, if you're looking for brick and mortar retail, I am the guy in that narrow, narrow niche who thinks that we can do it. And that it's all about doing better ourselves instead of blaming someone else for not doing good. Hey, Candace, glad you're here from Maine. Glad you're here today. So uh, I, I, again, if you have any questions while we're going along, you can certainly type them in. Uh, I was going to show you this last weekend, I was able to be a uh, Bentley influencer. I'm shown here with Terrence McGowan. She is, he is the uh, manager of Paramus, New Jersey, Bentley. And uh, that car is an amazing vehicle. I'm going to write a blog about it. And I'm going to have a thing on LinkedIn. It's an amazing uh, vehicle, zero to 60 in like three seconds and all sorts of fabulous things. And talking about customization, how many different ways you can do things because luxury is about customization. And I have all those points. But the thing that was striking to me, and by the way, the name of this color is uh, Jetstream, was wherever the car was, people walked up smiling and asked what it was. I've never had a car bring joy to people before. I've had cars that bring me joy, but I haven't really seen that in other people. And the reason why I brought that up today is just to ask you to be thinking instead of about your products, features, and benefits, and we buy local and sustainable, it's on sale, whatever all that other stuff is, what is it actually doing for your customer? How is it fitting into their day or into their lives and the stories that they tell? Because really that's all that matters. No one is buying uh, the fact that you know this was made, we used to carry uh, Pendleton shirts and uh, it always says virgin wool. And most people don't know that virgin wool is the uh, softer, thinner part. Uh, you can get recycled wool, which is like rags and things like that, which is really scratchy. So um, it's easy to get caught up in all those things. But really, it comes down to what does it feel like to be wearing it? You know, what does it feel like to be around the campfire? What does it feel like to be any number of things? So that's my tip for you today is just be thinking about what that product does for people and how it fits into their lives. And when you think of it that way, then life, I think it's easier to sell more instead of getting into that. I can help you find anything. Do you have a budget? Uh, you know, whatever that other crap is that people say over and over again, because it's a, that's a jaded way to look at it. And the thing that I appreciate and thing I'll be talking about with this vehicle actually is if you think about how those craftsmen have been in crew England for generations and building this machine, and you think of the pride they have and all the little touches that they go through to make that machine for a select few, I get it. It's a privilege. I understand all that. Leave that alone, please. And you think about that vehicle coming into a dealership and what happens if somebody doesn't give it that care. And more often than not, that's what I see when I go into a lot of retailers. We have people who actually are pouring water on the product instead of building it up. So I'll be talking about that uh, later. And this week, I'm starting my coaching program. So uh, you probably have seen the ads for it. It's uh, I'll put the link in here in just a minute. And um, it's where every other week I'm going to meet with our the best retailers you're going to go through and there's content for you to become better retailers, but also to answer your questions in real time with me as part of group coaching. We're looking for a small group, maybe five to 10 people. That's it. I'm going to share some of my latest AI tools and other things that I'm not simply going to share with anybody else because quite simply, it's a paid program. And if you pay for it, you'll probably take advantage of it and you'll do the work instead of just watching a video and saying, oh, I understand that, right? It comes down to doing not thinking about it. So uh, if you have, if your sales are at least a million a year or 750 a year, 
uh, you might look at that. I'm going to put this in comments right now in case you want to check that out. It's funny, you know, I went through, and that starts on Wednesday. I, um, I went back through, you know, I've been doing this for an awful long time. So I wanted to go back to four years ago uh, in April of 2024. Anybody have any ideas what the questions were about on that day? Anyone? Anyone have any ideas what those questions were about? Anybody? Put it in comments. What do you think the questions were about uh, April the 12th, 2020? Hey, Adana, glad you're here this morning. Connie, I'm glad you're here this morning. Stacy, glad you're here. It looks like you're here twice. I'm not sure how that works, but Margo, glad you're here. It was it was all about the PPP. Yeah, survival, exactly. Stacy, people were asked COVID, exactly. People were people were asking, what are we going to do when we reopen and all sorts of kind of things. So I'm glad we're not talking about that. And we have a wide variety of interesting questions today. So I hope you'll you'll stay with me the whole time. Usually these are about 15 minutes. You have to go. I promise I will still be here when you get back. You can rewatch it. Diane has a long question to me, but it basically comes down. She's a brick and mortar prom dress store. She's got prom dresses and she's got tuxedos. And uh, basically the quality is going down. The, the market is being punished with a bunch of different suppliers as costs go up. Things are, you know, not selling like they used to. And uh, so she said, so the cheap online companies take a portion of my business. Is it a good time to exit the dress business? My tuxedo business is rock solid and definitely my passion. Also, the overhead to run the dress side is high due to many factors, but especially space needed and amount of staff to give great service and protect the quality of dresses. Diane, I think you've answered your question. If you're rock solid uh, in something else and it's your passion, I always say go there. Um, I think so many people go through and we add lines and we think, oh, if I just had this thing, I would be able to be um, successful. Well, maybe. But if you really start looking at it and saying, how much is this costing me and my time? I mean, it'll, it won't be cheap for you to get out of that business. But I would say you just start by not buying a lot of other things as well. Tom from Akron. Hey, I, uh, I grew up in Toledo, Ohio. Actually, Ottawa Hills, not too far from there. And my Good buddy Tony uh, Drockton is from uh, Bowling Green, so not too far away from me. Idris asks, I'm about to set up a time clock system for attendance of employees, and the reason is tardiness of employees. My challenge is, what is the right amount of deduction that make employees care about coming on time, not feel harsh so they decide to leave or lenient so they don't care? So Idris, I... I mean, when as I start to read this, I'm like, how does anyone not have a time clock system to have people come in? Usually it's the register. You have to log in there. And I've always taught in probably 40 years. And the way I was always taught when I first started out is you arrive five minutes early to get all your crap together, get your shirt on, whatever it's going to be, find out the specials of the day, find out the, you know, between shifts, all that thing, maybe have a morning puzzle. And you are to be on time at, if this was 9 a.m., at 9 a.m., at 9.01, you're late. So I don't know what you're thinking about. It's funny, um, I, and this might be a little side pocket for all of you, but I hear so many people, hey, Dave, I'm glad you're here early. Uh, I hear so many people telling me like how hard it is to manage young people these days. Oh, it's terrible. It's just impossible. And, uh, and then they're irregularly calling it millennials. Millennials are in their 40s now, everybody. You're talking about Gen Z in their 20s. So just be careful who you're slamming. Uh, one was adamant on my post this week and I just get tired of it. It's like, but then why are you in business? If you hate the people that are have to work there, why are you a business person? Go and work with dogs, you know, if it bothers you that much. Anyway, side story. So you all probably know the story of Mike Sheldrake. He was my very first client 30 some years ago, small coffee roaster going at Starbucks. And uh, he was telling me about in the 60s, <clears throat> His managers, they had several uh, Kentucky Fried Chickens, and they said, we can't get our employees to wear the hairnets because guys had much longer hair. My hair was down to like here. Stacy, you didn't even say anything about the jacket today. Like, this is amazing. This is Wax London. Anyway, uh, Disney said, uh, they, they say, oh, well, uh, we can't get our guys to wear them. And the uh, regional director came in one day and he goes, well, Disneyland can. What's the difference? You're both in Orange County, you know, the person that says they can't, they win. And the person that says they can, they win. So which do you want to be? So Idris, if you're having trouble with people being on time, um, you know, what is that? Does it hurt enough for you to change or not? It's one of the first things we talk about in the coaching program is finding 
your ultimate why and getting leverage on yourself. Because if you don't really believe in what you're doing and why you're doing it, then you won't be able to have tough conversations. And we're going to talk about tough conversations in a minute with Corinne. And that's going to be a really interesting one for you all to jump in. Thank you. Fine. Oh, thank you, Stace. Uh, I'm glad to know that. Thank you. All right. So David says, how do you know if your payroll is too high? Um, you know, that's kind of like saying, how do you know if a price of a vehicle, a vehicle that's $330,000, how do you know if that's too high? Well, ultimately, that's not the right question, I think. Uh, there's plenty of times you would have high payroll because you have people that are high performing and they are doing the business. You know, high, high sales covers a wealth of sins. I've said that forever. But I think the right question is, how do you know that you're staffed right? Because, you know, there are people who will give you formulas like, oh, payroll can't be more than 28%. Well, compared to who? Compared to what? Compared to what percentage, right? Because some people own their building outright, right? Grandpa bought it, so there's no overhead there. Or uh, you're a new business owner, you take a loan out on your house, that's a big nut that you've got to make as well. So what's the percentage is supposed to do? But I do think you have to look at, more importantly, are you losing sales, which is what I'm seeing over and over again in retail stores? We are so uh, under uh, undermanned. Is that the right word? Underpersoned? Under personed? I don't know. We don't have enough staff that uh, we got away with a few people during the pandemic. And now it's kind of like we tell ourselves we can't get more people and you win because you're not willing to pay them. You know, I was going by, I'm in upstate New York and uh part of the Bentley trip was going through uh, Pennsylvania and it was routine to see on now hiring signs uh, ranges of like starting 18 to $22 an hour. So if you're trying to get somebody at 10, guess what? That's not going to happen. But I do think that you can look at the number of people on your payroll and just take half hourly reports. Any decent POS system will show you that for two weeks, just log them and see how many rings you have per hour. And that'll tell you basically how your store is performing. And then you, schedule to the shift but uh you know circuit city did the uh most bogus thing ever before they quit they went out of business a year before they fired all their full-time people that knew stuff about the product and the ceo said we don't need people like that know about the product because it's all online and they were gone in a year so tell me was that too high to have people who knew about your products uh, it's a slippery slope. I get it. it's a gray and I don't think I can tell anybody exactly it, but I do, you know, like you're right and you're wrong, but I do think what you want to look at is, am I getting performance out of the hours? I am asking people to work for me. I hope that helps. Janet says reward points. Where do you draw the line? I want customer excited, but I can't continue to give up margins. So Janet, I am not a fan of uh, loyalty programs. I think a lot of independents do them because they see it at uh, fill in the blank. You know, I don't know, uh, Costco or Best Buy or other big Starbucks, right? I'd like that. I use them. Right. I get it. Have you looked at the price that you're paying for that? There's a price for the service, price for the discounts, getting it out. And what's your messaging to everybody is, oh, get 10% off or whatever it's going to be. Get notice of our advanced sales. Your advanced sales are on stuff that's out of that's not doing well. Go back to the Bentley picture. What does it do for your customer? Yes, there's a customer that will rave. And I got it 50% off. Oh, aren't you smart? You bought a uh you bought a winter coat in um in April for 50% off. You're great. Are you? Like <laughs> wouldn't you rather have people that are saying I just got like my wax London? I just got this. Doesn't this look cool? How many people I have look at it and they're like, "What is that thing?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's very cool. I like their stuff." So I want you to consider that are there other ways instead of just doing that and then knowing or do you have a sophisticated enough system to be able to track all those discounts and all those things you're doing because that's the other thing. Publicly traded companies don't care as much because at the end of the day, they've got to just show sales growth and conversion rate and all that. But in your case, is it just a matter of we feel like we should do it and we do it? And by the way, sidebar, if you're using those little punch cards uh that people do oh you know get seven and eight free or get 10 punches and twenty dollars um when i was in the coffee business we had a a problem um a uh associate got really upset at the brand and took a handful of those cards punched them all up and handed them out at cal state long beach and suddenly we saw all these free drinks going out the door because there's no way to 
say who did that. So if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, consider it has to be in your system and it's done automatically instead of old fashioned things like that. So I hope that helps. Uh, thank you. It does look cool. I see. I I thought so. There you go. I appreciate that. All right. Exactly, David. <laughs> exactly. Discount equals you charge too much. By the way, sidebar again, a lot of information to share with you today. Uh, uh, Facebook, is starting, I think it's on the 25th, so two weeks from now, is going to make you go through uh, Facebook first before going live. So like I use StreamYard, I go through StreamYard to go to Facebook. They're clamping down on it, so I won't be able to do things like show the comment. So if those of you who do a lot of lives, pay attention. There's some changes coming. All right. So if you like what I have to say, give me some thumbs up. Let me know you're out there. I know that we're already at 15 minutes and uh, we're almost uh, through my questions, but let me know you're out there. Give me some thumbs up. Let me know that you're alive. No matter what platform you're on, all you take is just put a yes or a thumbs up or put something in comments. So the algorithm thinks that uh, you're enjoying the show because it seems like you're all we're continuing to build. There they are. Now they're coming up. Thank you very much for that. All right. So we're on to Rachel. Rachel is a flooring retailer. She says during a slowdown, what are some unique ways to drum up business for a flooring retailer? So these are some ideas that anybody could use, but I am going to specifically uh, talk for Rachel. Uh, quick story, going back to Mike Sheldrake, my coffee roasting guy. Uh, when I first took his account back in 1990, my goodness, four he had been in business already for 30 some years. And he's telling me, everybody knows who we are. Everybody knows who we are. And there's no need to advertise. And I said, really? And so I walked his trade area one mile around, all the way around his store. And you know what? I found less than a third of the people knew who he was, where he was. And so I left just a little eighth of a bag of coffee every time because only about a third of the people opened their doors. If I had time, I probably would have done it on a Saturday. But shoe leather is certainly one of the ones that you can do. You could certainly go to a, um, a business park and you could talk to local people there. You could partner with a window and uh, uh, window fashion store like Hunter Douglas, those kind of people, because those are logical places to go. Certainly talking to real realtors, which I'm sure you've done, uh, but calling all your old customers and they didn't probably do the whole house in whatever that flooring is. So is there something else you could do it in? Um, walking neighborhood I talked about, but I also think how cool would it be if you just took your phone and you said, you know, I'm going to go to all these open houses this week. I'm going to do a live video. You can do a live video from your phone and I'm going to show, uh, what can we do differently in this house that would make it look better? I think that'd be really cool because you're giving the real realtors, uh, some traction. You're giving yourself having to really think about it and then go the next level and say, um, uh, you know, uh, why, why don't we give us the history of flooring? So one of them could be like, it used to be dirt. So what was the good thing about dirt? Well, it was cheap and easy to do. What was the downside? Yeah, getting rid of dust was tough. Whatever it's going to be, but you could have some educational parts to it as well. But the key is you have to always be thinking of how do I come up with content that's interesting? That's the same thing I do. Gosh knows if you follow me, I, uh, I only have two associates that work with me and, uh, I've got to be on LinkedIn every day and I've got to have something on YouTube and I've got to have something on Facebook. And the thing that always resonates is when I get a new client, I'll say like, why today did you decide to call me? Oh, I followed you for years. That's kind of it. That we can do such better job now than we used to because we used to have to send out a mailer and hope to God something happened. Now people know who you are. They know the jacket. They're telling me about, oh, the Bentley. I saw that thing I'm looking for, right? All of those parts make it more interesting for you to be marketing instead of just saying 20% off this weekend only friends and family. 20. Oh, please give me a break. It's just, can we just stop with friends and family? Just like, I just, ugh, I hate that. But so unique. It, it's a sale. We would have just said it's a sale. It's open to anyone. So it's not friends and family. If everybody's a friend and family, give them half off. Anyway, don't get me started. Maggie says, uh, and she's in upstate Michigan. So reopening after winter strategy, by the way, it's this next week. So, well, welcome back. And Maggie, what I want you to do is I actually put this in and I'm going to copy this with any luck. I'm going to put this into comments right now. Just put this into chat GPT. 
And uh, it will give you some really good ideas about what people are looking for, and it will help you understand how you could be marketing to them right now. I would encourage all of you to be doing that. <laughs> micro rant, friends and family. <laughs> I didn't know I had micro rants, but that kind of works for me, St uh, Stace. Uh, so there's some great ideas you could do there, and everybody should be using Chat GPT for all kinds of things. And yes, I do believe it's the start of Skynet with Terminator, but hopefully that's not going to be in my lifetime. It'll be many generations down. All right. So here's Corinne's long one to me. And uh, I'll be curious. And I've actually had to write out all of my answers because it's very, it's a very big uh, uh, challenge. And this is probably would be something I would have been talking about in the coaching program, which again starts when? On Wednesday. It runs 549 a month. Uh, it's only for each person. This isn't related to sales or X sales or X you should be doing anyway, my online training. And there is a one-time onboarding fee. And again, the information is there. So Corinne, tell us what's going on and tell me if this happened to you as well. We recently gave a raise to an associate in his mid twenties. Who's been doing a great job. He's a top seller, taking on more responsibility, wants to be on track for supervisor role. We love that, right? Problem is, he told his female colleague who started a few weeks earlier than he did about his increase, and she's really upset that she isn't a good or raised too. By the way, she's going back to school in the fall. Our manager spoke with her and told her she's appreciated, but she still feels she's been wronged. Unfortunately, she's been to act disengaged, and the team dynamic is ruined just when we thought it was fine. Anyone else been there? Give me a thumbs up. Anyone else been there? We've all been there. We think it's great, and then all of a sudden, holy crap, I didn't see that one coming. We have a bonus program. She received a wage increase a month after starting, and she's making well above minimum wage. She's only been there seven months. How would you proceed? Well, I, I did have to write this out because it's very long, um, but things happen, and I'm sorry. I'm not going to feel beholden. So I agree. You have to acknowledge your feelings, recognize that that's what it is, validating that she's upset. I totally get it. Explain what the criteria for the raise was. High sales was his metrics. He wants the path to stay with us. He has a long-term commitment. His individual growth plan is to become a strategic partner in our business. We need to hold on to that because that's where we are going. I recognize your, you know, reaffirm her value. I recognize your contributions and you gave her the increase. You know, I, I am thrilled you're going back to college and you can talk about her path if you want to follow James's path, you know, you want to be with me for a year, have to sell more, do this and this, make sure that's it. And talk about how, you know, this has seems to have become a, a stopping point and we need to fix that. So what's it going to take for us to have that conversation and let her, you know, you'd have this in private already, uh, plan it. You're not going to just do this on the floor, but you need to be right up front with her. And if she can't get her head over it, then you need to move on. I know that sounds tough. I am the retail doc, but I'm not going to be holding to somebody who thinks that they should be getting one, even though they haven't done it. It was a performance raise, performance raise for someone who's willing to commit to you. He's the one I want to build the business on. I'd love to build it on her as well. But if she's already told you we're in April, for goodness sake, and she's already telling you she's going back to school in August, that's less than four months away. You could probably fund somebody else. So uh, I don't know if anyone else likes that, but that's how I would handle it. And uh, my last one is from Lynn. How do, and by the way, if you have a question, you can put it in here and I will read it. Uh, if not right now, I will do it. Um, I will do it after the, the program because we're almost done. Lynn, how do other retailers handle security or shoplifters with their employees? So I think it's all over the map, Lynn. You know, some people have zero tolerance. Everybody gets a phone call or no one does. I used to, uh, when I was first starting out uh, selling cowboy clothes, I remember I walked around the back and I saw that uh, this kid had like a dozen pair of moccasins and was running out the back door of the store in the mall. So I go running after him. I'm indignant. How could someone do this? I'm 21, right? I'm running through the, through the catacombs in the back of the mall, leave the mall doors running across the street Col was that Colorado that was Green Street running across and there's a park there and I'm yelling for a cop I see a cop get over here there's a cop they stole those and the cop comes running over he was getting the car go, it's the guy he's right there get get in the car I was like well, uh, get in the car so I get in the car he goes were those your moccasins I said well no why he goes how do you know that kid didn't have a gun I didn't have a buddy with a knife what the hell are you doing risking your life for that uh 
sorry, sir. I think that everybody has to have a understanding of, uh, you know, things happen and take as many I've written about shoplifting and security more often than not, it's from employees and it's called shrink because it could happen from someone being lazy. When an order comes in, there's supposed to be 24 pieces. They mark it off and there's really only 12. So automatically you think, Oh my God, we've lost half the stock. Did you, or was it not really there to begin with? Or things are mistagged or not tagged again, or employees have the five finger discount because they feel like you gave a, a bon you gave a raise to that guy and not to me. There's a million reasons those things happen. And it needs to be built in your price structure, which is why you don't want to end up being at a 26% uh, margin like um, you know a Amazon or something get away with. You need enough that you can get that back. So that's it. Those are my those are my points for you today. I hope you got something out of it. Give me some more love. Put a Y if you got something out of it. You can tell me what it is right now in comments while I'm live. What's one thing you got out of today? Put it, type it, put it in there because frankly, you spent 25 minutes with me. Make sure that it matters. Make sure you tell that brain, I have to find out what did I just learn? What did I just experience? And then when you type it out, you're building the synapse. That's how things work. So uh, again, I've been a trainer for an awful long time. I've been trained by the worst and uh, created the best. And if we don't make the brain have to think of what's happening, then oftentimes it just fades into another cat video memory and we don't want that. So there you go. What's your margin goal? Well, love child, uh, my margin goal is enough money that I can make that I can live the life I want. So I think you have to take a margin across the board. Some people love to tell me, oh, I got 73% margin on something. Well, BFD, I mean, if you don't sell many of them, I want, you know, 500% margin. But um, I think as a whole, you need to look with your accountant at how that all plays out. So there you go. I'm Bob Fibbs, the retail doc. Tell your friends if they weren't on this call, they should be. You can share it with them. And then certainly check out my uh, YouTube channel where all of my videos live. And more importantly, just remember, we're about as successful as we make our minds up to be. I'm Bob Fibbs, The Retail Doc. Thanks for joining me today.